From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. To produce gold as cheaply as possible, South African gold miner Pan-African Resources is undergoing a significant tailings retreatment project at its Evanda mine in Mpumalanga, which will result in the construction of a 6.35 billion tailings retreatment plant. David Oliveira tells us more. During a visit to the mine in April, media was shown the future location of the plant, with construction starting in the third quarter of this year and to be completed by the third quarter of 2018. Commercial production is expected to start the following quarter. Pan-African Group mining engineer Bert van den Berg explained that the first phase of the project would entail the treating of tailings from the Kinross mine dump. Currently, the next uh, gate that we're looking at is the, the issuing of our water use license. Uh, which we're expecting to happen in the third quarter of this year, September roughly. Uh, after that, we'll be able to start construction of the Ilikulu plant and the TSF, uh, the tailing st uh, storage facility that we need to do here. Uh, we're going to do about a million tons of tailings a month, uh, starting here with the Kinross dump. Uh, for the first four or five years, it will be treating here. Uh, goes right across the road. Uh, the Ilikulu plant will be building right next to our current plant, uh, next to the seven shaft complex. So roughly 150 meters from the dump, so not very long pumping distances. Uh, we're looking at a recovery of roughly about 47% uh, uh, grade of the Kinross dump, about 0.32. The 58 million ton Kinross dump is being treated as part of the Evander Tailings Retreatment Plant project, with a rate of 200,000 tons per month and the slimes being processed at the Kinross mine. Head grades produced from the mine are currently about 0.32 grams per tonne at recoveries of between 42% and 50%. The production profile runs for the first 10 years, averages at about 54,000 ounces a year, 54, 56,000 ounces a year. Uh, it tapers down a little bit towards the end as we start doing the other dumps which are a little bit lower grade, although it's a little bit better recovery. Phases 2 and 3 of the Elikulu project, which will result in the treatment of the Bracken Leslie and Winkel Hark dumps respectively, are scheduled to start in the fourth quarter of 2021 and the third quarter of 2026 respectively. Once completed, Elikulu will process 1 million tons a month of tailings. The project is expected to recover about 689,000 ounces of gold and will create 245 jobs once the plant reaches full capacity. We haven't included the soil resources in, in our current plan, uh, which is about uh, 0.2 million tons of, 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 of material that we can mine. Uh, it could come in later, which is not in the current resources, so that could extend it a little bit. So we're looking at 13, 14 years for this project. Meanwhile, Van den Berg pointed out that the next organic underground growth project at Evander was likely to be the 2010 pay shoot, which has an estimated resource of about 2.2 million ounces at a grade of about 13 grams per tonne. Drilling of the pay shoot started under previous owner Harmony Gold, which expected to complete the program by 2010. Pan African is continuing the drilling at the offshoot, having reached a depth of just below 1.5 kilometers at the time of the media visit. Other news making headlines. Planned infrastructure development presents milling opportunities and quad bikes and side-by-side -side vehicles used for rough terrains. Planned and ongoing infrastructure development taking place locally and on the rest of the continent presents opportunities for securing work for civil and road infrastructure projects, says road milling company Road Milling and Sweeping. Risks are smaller businesses coming into the market, building up, um, you, you want to maintain your competitive advantage, so risks are, I would say, if we look at internal risks, maintaining um, mechanical efficiencies on all of our machines, and minimizing our downtime. Um, obviously, if our machines are continuously having breakdowns, etc., which they don't, um, that, that is a big risk because um, our customers are then reliant and, and losing production time if, if machines don't work. Distributed in South Africa by equipment supplier Smith Power Equipment, single-seater quads and side-by-sides, two- and three-seater vehicles are used for robust tasks. Depending on the use of the vehicle, there are different requirements in terms of engine specifications and drivetrain. Uh, for a customer that's just using it as a runaround on the farm, a two-wheel drive vehicle with a small displacement engine is normally good enough. As the, as the workload gets a little bit harder, we go to a four-wheel drive type system with a more powerful engine, such as the 570 or the 900cc Polaris ranges. In terms of maintenance, they need maintenance every 100 hours. The most important thing to look at is ensuring that air filters are kept clean and the running gear is kept clean of all debris. 
Um, in terms of what our customers use them for, they use them for everything from general purpose, running around on the farm, to security, anti-poaching, um, conservation, game viewing, or hunting vehicles. We also got certain applications that we use them for irrigation, um, as well as um, as well as using anti-poaching, etc. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.